everyone to another edition of the wrestling mainstream podcast live on twitch.tv backslash wrestling underground and eventually ported it over to youtube.com at the wrestling underground i don't know that was dumb of us to come up with that that's on me i'm dumb i'm your host as always chad porto and joining me is the glorious one himself marcus green marcus it's november that means it's time for voting Yes, the only voting that matters, the Wrestling Award of the Years! Ah! We gotta start coming up with our, uh, our ballots. It's gonna be so hard to come up with Match of the Year because so many matches were without crowd noise, and sometimes the crowd just makes a match so much better. <laughs> uh, Marcus, are you gonna have a hard time coming up with uh, your Matches of the Year? Paula, just, <laughs> I feel like we're both just gonna be like, you know what? Let's just make it a G1 year. <laughs> just pick your favorite G1 and shut up. Yeah, we, we both selected the uh, Motor City North match, and then the rest could be G1 match. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. So can we just talk about real fast that Paige without all that pale face makeup that she used to rock, really sexy, but she do- gets some points docked. For that lower abdomen, upper stomach tattoo. I'm not a tattoo guy. And I, yeah, I don't me, just mean me. on, on chicks. I mean on anyone. I think tattoos are dumb. It's 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 funny, man. I'm not a tech. I mean, I don't think either one of us have any tats. Nope. Um, I don't not, have any mistakes not, yeah. or, or, or ill-advised evenings, if you will. <laughs> Chad, Chad's like, I don't want to wear my trauma. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, but, tattoos uh, peaked in 1997 when Goldberg debuted. After that, there is no such thing as a good tattoo. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, over time, man, I, I've grown to appreciate good ones. Like I said, I like the rosary Ray Mysterio has and some other ones. Like, I, I like, I really dig those Samoan sleeves and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I, I obviously never get them, but, you know, I can appreciate good ones. But, yeah, some people just, like, we've talked about, obviously, Cody's infamous one. Oh, God. Batista's gone a little, little far <laughs> with the... Uh, Horrible belly uh, button thing. Lance uh, Archer's okay. tramp stamp. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a thing. <laughs> or at least it was. I don't know if he had it expanded on, but if you go back to watch his stuff in TNA in like 04, 05, yeah, he's got like some kind of like Van Halen uh, logo tramp stamp on his lower back. And it's, oh, God. So, oh God, why? <laughs> yeah. Um, then can't forget about Gallagher's Gentleman of the Caribbean dad on his shit. Well, luckily, I think we've all forgotten about Gallagher. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. oh, yeah. I forgot he fell into that crevice, didn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, He fell into that mystery hole in The Simpsons. He and Ozzy Smith are just <laughs> twirling around into oblivion. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, she, you know, she, you know, she, she got some... You know, nice weight on her, and she, like you said, all the all the all the makeup, and she just, she really is pretty. She and, pretty. Um, <laughs> she she real pretty. pretty. She calls herself a, a glam pie, and I'm not normally into goth chicks. Um, although I will make certain exceptions for the uh, who was those chicks in the in the Scooby Doo uh witch movie? Oh yeah, like the uh, the, the vampire chicks, or or no, the wit- witches? Is it, I forget they were. Yeah, you're talking about the band, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they call themselves Wiccans or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I feel you. Oh, they're, they're hot. Marcus. They're hot. <laughs> the blonde cheerleader and the goth chick are, like, my two vibration points. <laughs> Hilarious. Like, <laughs> like Wednesday <laughs> Adams or Christina Ricci as Morticia Adams. Like, oh, God, yes. The Veronica's. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm in. Like, sign, sign, eat my soul. You, it, yep, sign it up. It's yours. You're going to have to suck it out of me. But don't. And it, it, hilarious. <laughs> and it's funny, too, because I was uh, having a Netflixy weekend. I was like, you know what? I saw the movies, Chad gave my thumbs up. So I got to check out these, even though it's November now. We could extend Halloween. I got to check out them babysitter movies. What'd you think? <laughs> No, I, I, I'm going to check them both. Oh, okay. I'm both back to that. Cause, uh, but they look good. Like, I don't know who. I think the same girl that's the lead. Well, not necessarily the lead. I guess the babysitter chick was also in that. Um, 
what's the movie with the Catch Me If You Can where she was in the house? Yes, yes, that is uh-huh. her. Yeah. Um, yeah she, it's like her she, wedding day, and they're like, you know, we're going to hunt you down. And she was also in the new Bill yes. and Ted, which is really good. Samara yeah, Weaving, I think her name movie. is. Yes, yes, yeah. she was phenomenal in that, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, wait until you get to the sequel because, like, even it's just it's. Uh, I, I like the sequel even more, but the sequel only works if you've seen the first one, because so much of it is a callback. Yeah. <laughs> and my friend stupidly watched the sequel first, thinking that it's like Friday the Thirteenth or whatever, where you can just watch them in any order. And he's like, "I didn't get it." I'm like, "Cause you had to watch the first one, you dork." <laughs> but it definitely pays. I think the first one's great. They, they're just really good. Robbie Amell is fantastic in that. He's the best. I think Robbie Mel might be the best character in both movies. Um, well, all right, let's let's talk about things that aren't great uh, before we hop over to the download side of things. Again, if you're listening on YouTube, check the link down below to hear the second part of this podcast. We 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 break it up in two parts, kind of like the old uh, Opie and Anthony days, if you remember them, where they would do one on uh, terrestrial radio and then they would go on their satellite gig. Uh, but uh, let's start with WWE. They had the lowest ratings ever for a, a hour of Raw. Uh, the third hour of this past Monday is the lowest ever in the history of the, of the company. I mean, the writing's on the wall. You know, with, with AEW actually doing fairly well and getting like, you know, granted, I think this past Wednesday wasn't great for them, but I think something was on on Wednesday that I don't remember, so I don't know. But, um... They, they, you know, they routinely get one point, you know, two, one point one million viewers, and Raw's at one four. You really can't sit here and argue with me and say that Raw is more popular or, that, or, or significantly more popular than AEW, or that WWE can't be overtaken again, because they absolutely can. Now, I don't think AEW is like a great product or anything, but at least their shit usually makes sense. Although I'm still thinking about that whole fucking Dark Order thing and how it's been going on for a year, and there's still no real fucking payoff to it. And it just makes me mad, and I'm getting so mad. <laughs> but, Marcus, the ratings are in the toilet. Any thoughts on that? No, that's 100%. Uh, well, that's a 200% earned. You kick off a show with, uh, you know, your, your champion, which you'll have, so, just so happens to be Blandy Orton. And you uh, end the show with... What it was, a, a handicap match or something with um, Drew McIntyre versus Miz and Morrison? Come on, man. Yeah, that's not good. It's a no for me, dog. It's a no for us, dog. So, you know, you, you 100% get what you, uh, get what you uh, earned. Now, there is also another point of contention that we should bring up, and that's the public issues that the WWE has been engaging with talent. I don't think people... Because it happens so constantly that people aren't really aware of how bad this actually is. In the last year, just just from fucking February, they've... Or or we'll go back to last year. They've had two accusations of sexual assault that were basically undermined and, and, and did nothing with. They fired two or three wrestlers for other allegations. They've let numerous people go due to uh, cost-cutting measures, many of which they're like, well, we're going to bring back and still haven't brought back. Uh, They cut 30 wrestlers, I think, give or take, maybe a little bit less. They then went on to have their best and most profitable month ever, making the decisions to cut talent look even worse in hindsight because you cut talent even though you didn't have to. And then you go into this whole kerfuffle where you're telling your independent contractors that they can't independently make money outside your organization by shutting down their YouTube and Twitch channels unless they basically capitulate and sign over their content to you. Like, these are some horrid business practices that are not getting talked about nearly as much outside of wrestling. And because wrestling fans are so dogmatic, you know, I feel like, you know, even though there's an election going on, you and I are kind of like, this is just another day for us because we see this tribal mentality at its worst every day in, in the wrestling subcommunities. So I'm not surprised that, you know, here we are with some pretty outrageous and heinous situations. Again, Matt Riddle's being sued. You know, WD Talent are being threatened to be fired if they don't stop streaming and making money because the WD can't control their revenue stream. And people are like, oh, no, it's fine. 
It's not fine. It's gross. Now, I don't think a union's the, the, the answer, and I think that's a great way to, to kill profitability and the ability for independent talent to make money. Maybe if it's just a WWE union, maybe that's a different situation. But all in all, you know, this is not a, a good situation for the industry to be in. And with the WWE still kind of, you know, trying to choke out the rest of the industry on their way down, kind of like, uh, like, so, yeah, like it's, it's a drowning person. The industry is the lifeguard. And the WWE knows that they're going to drown anyway. So instead of letting go and just, you know, letting the water take them down, they're going to take everyone down with them. And it's, it's a pretty gross kind of situation that we're in. And the Twitch thing, I think, is, is going to be the tipping point for, for a lot of what's to come. It's not going to be the biggest moment necessarily, but it's going to be the moment that I think escalates this into some type of um, impassable situation where we can no longer come back from. I think that's a very likely situation uh, coming forward. Uh, as far as uh, like Paige and um, uh, Zel- Zelina Vega, right? That's, uh, that's Rosita. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. They're not shutting down their, their stuff. Paige is still going to be on Twitch, and Vega is going to continue her OnlyFans. So they're basically daring them to, to fire them, and they might. You know, and if I'm Vince McMahon, like, you're kind of in a situation now where you have to fire them. Otherwise, you, you, know, you, you lose all credibility because they're not going to pay fines. And legally speaking, they don't have to. So there, it's going to be a very interesting thing. Like, they could sue the talent, but again, that will just make you look bad. And you already look terrible. Your ratings are on the toilet. The, the new upstart is kicking your ass. What do you have? You have nothing. So this is going to be a very pivotal, 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 God damn it, pivotal next few months. Yeah, and it's interesting. I've seen some people kind of shooting back at Paige saying, I, again, she referenced this in the video, I don't know if you saw it, uh, where she kind of just broke down and was like, look, man, like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, she just had a wit's end. You know, she was like, look, I, I'm sitting at home not doing much. They're not using me. I got to put off TV. I, I, you know, she said she broke her neck twice for the company. Um, and, you know, just going on, say she can't really, you know, take it because it's you know it's the talking about it's the outlet for folks and it's more than just money on the side and she was like look like it's pennies what they make on there compared to the millions that the company makes which she's right you know but i think more so for her more than anything she talked about like she's had a real crappy two years uh with the tapes and everything leaking and the stuff with del rio um on top of the next stuff and then in the midst of that i think she went down a real bad path with some substances that may have led to potential self-harm um, on, on a real deep perspective. So I think a lot of people not taking to effect that she's saying, like, somebody else just, just might be, like, losing, like, a legitimate hobby, and that that's part of it. But I think she's also saying, like, this is also saving my life because I think mm-hmm. the, the spot she got to was, like, real bad. So if she, more than most people, that's sitting at home not – really doing nothing which she said several times it's like look i kind of need this because i can't afford to go back to that negative space off of being depressed that i'm sitting at home watching all these people get to do what i no longer can so it's like it's a real sticky situation to be in as i think she mentioned talking to like a lawyer about unionization and stuff like that and you know that's that's one instance coming from her but again you know to your point we'll see you know, the old geese are fire a couple of talent before we see these guys come together, unfortunately, you know, because it's how many years has this kind of stuff been going on? And it's like, well, I guess I'm getting paid enough on the back end to justify all the effort that I put up with. Right. So. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and that that's kind of the, the situation that I think we find ourselves in is there's enough guys on the top. And gals too. Like let's not let's not pretend that people like Sasha, Charlotte, and and you know maybe Lacey Evans is the wrong name to use, but let's not pretend like they're going to be interested in helping out people who aren't making money because this is a ruthless business. If you're not working, you're not making money, and if you're working, you're taking time from someone else. So there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be backstabbing one another. So the idea of being able to unionize, uh, that's that's a stretch, man. Like. 
You know, Seth doesn't seem like a union guy. Styles is definitely not a union guy. So th- this is going to be a, a real interesting next few months. That's for sure. Uh, it, it, we'll see how, how things go. If the ratings continue to bottom out, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, like, like if this show becomes too expensive for the USA Network to carry, they'll, they'll cancel them. You know, they, they straight up would cancel them or, or rework the, the contract. Because it's going to come to a point where this contract is, is unsustainable for, for the USA Network for what they're paying for the D- WWE product. It may not be tomorrow. Yeah. It may not be in the next year. But eventually, that deal will expire or will be ended. And USA will be like, we're not paying you that. You don't deserve, you don't deserve that. AEW is you know, pro- pulling in the same numbers for half the price. And, and when that happens, yeah. ooh, there goes that Japan expansion. Yeah, and and while we you know we never lament to uh, probably give them you know whatever cons they have for certain things that go on over there, you know WWE then going back to what you were saying about the sexual allegations. I understand want to control the narrative, but change but taking somebody's first name off just to call them uh, Riddle, just so when people Google the name. All the stuff about the lawsuits won't come up. No, it's not gonna work. It's a uh, it's a very interesting situation to see how the WWE is trying to kind of control that narrative. It ain't working, <laughs> but it's interesting. Speaking of interesting, let's move on. We have some good news to talk about. Uh, a guy I champion a lot, Anthony Bowens, five tool player, has signed yeah. with All Elite Wrestling. I'm a little disappointed, not going to lie. I was really hoping that Impact would sign the guy. He's He's got the look, the body, the skill set, the athleticism, the likability, the charm. He's everything that I think you would want in, in a wrestling company as a top star. He checks a lot of the, the, the minority demographics. He's black. I think he's bisexual and or gay. You know, so he, he's, he's checking off a lot of marks, but he also looks like a badass. So, like, the, your casual wrestling fans would totally believe that he's an ass kicker. So, it was one of those guys, like, you know, he's, he's like, he's the pony. You know, he's the, uh, the, the, the unicorn. You know, you got a unicorn out there, and you're like, ah, you know, I'm going to sign Larry D instead. What? What? Uh, y'all make my head hurt. <laughs> yeah, not to, not to make any uh, type of... Uh... We're not casting up dispersions about Larry D. Yeah, any type of uh, on a joking connotation about his sexuality, but he really is, I guess, <laughs> because we know know them so well. He really is like a walking CW wet dream. <laughs> I mean, right? Like, if 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 you were the CW and you saw this dude and you're like, he caters to women and men. Hell yeah, let's make this dude the lead yeah. of our next DC franchise that no one's gonna watch. In, in, in another in another universe, we never met David Ramsey. It would have been <laughs> Anthony Bones. <laughs> Anthony Bones would have been Dickel. <laughs> Anthony Bones looks like uh, David Ramsey and Stephen Mills' illegitimate love child. Uh, Not sure how that happens, to, but it happened. They probably would try to tease some undertones of romance <laughs> to play off his real life. The press release would have included him saying he's bisexual because we needed to know. Right. Uh, He's either bisexual or he's gay. I, I read once that he was bi, but he could be, you know, gay. I, and it doesn't matter. I just don't want to be misquoting or, or misstating facts. That, that's the only reason why I bring it up. He's a good dude. Hell of, an, hell of a wrestler. And I'm, I'm real excited to see what he can do. He's going to be in another tag team. And I don't mean another because he's been in them. I mean another because that's all AEW seems to want is really impressive solo stars and tag teams. Like Pentagon, stick him in a tag team. Why? Then, then you have Anthony Bowen, stick him in a tag team. Why? <laughs> uh, I, uh, this company. You think they're going to stick him with the other Hoss? Uh, they signed him, uh, whoever he wrestled with, because he, he did a tag team match on Dark a few weeks back. Do you remember that? No, because I, I don't watch Dark. But, <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't watch AW, so, like, you know, we're in the same boat. <laughs> Uh, he did a tag team match on AEW Dark, and his tag team partner was signed as well. And apparently they're going to be going forward as a tag team. So, 
This is this is interesting because not too long ago, I think, wasn't uh the chairman himself, Sean Spears, looking for a tag team partner? Did they drop that? Did they drop him? Because they <laughs> should have. <laughs> oh my god, what a waste of a signing. Oh my mm. god. Anyway, speaking of oh my god, apparently New Japan ain't so mad about the impact anymore. Uh, they announced several of their Super J Cup One Night Tournament guys. I assume these are only the American or North American guys. We have eight in total, so I have to imagine there's going to be eight New Japan guys. Uh, the first one is El Fantasmo. Uh, then we have Carl Fredericks. Uh, I believe that's... Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Carl Fredericks. That's Clark Connors. Uh, then we have TJP, ACH, Blake Christian... Uh, Ray Horace, who I believe is the cousin to Rey Mysterio Jr. or the nephew of Rey Mysterio Jr. Uh, Leo Rush, and the big one being Chris Bay. Now they hey. announced, all, yeah, they announced all these guys on the website, and like you know, um, Ray Horace had the Ring of Honor, and uh, Blake Christensen had his GCW and ACH, and TJP are I guess entering as freelancers, so they don't have anything. Uh, Clark Connors is representing the Alley Dojo. Phantasmo is representing the Bullet Club, but when you got to um, Chris Bay, it says Impact Wrestling. Now, I don't necessarily think that this is a sign that you know, oh, they're gonna be, um, you know, oh, they're gonna be working together. I'm not ready to go there yet. I think that's way too premature. But what I will say is that. Um, this is a good sign if you want to see more impact in New Japan crossover. I do think that the partnership between the Good Brothers, Impact, and New Japan is, is going to be pivotal because uh, there's been rumors that the Good Brothers want to go back to New Japan at some point. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be leaving uh, Impact, but it does mean that they will be working for at least two different companies. I think when you kind of keep that in mind... Uh, this is going to be a, a situation where the doors open now for Impact and New Japan to do more work together. Uh, I, I'm excited about this. Super J Cup and the Tag League, I think, are on the same weekend. Is, is, is that how it is? Yeah, I think so. So I'm excited about that. That's going to be cool. Or I think they're on the same tour. I know they're not the same night because if you're going to do 16 guys in the Super J Cup, that, you know, that's, what, four... Six, set what, eight, nine matches right there, just with the Super J Cup. And then you're going to have the same number with, with the Tag League. So, like, you know, you're going to need to, you know, divvy that up some. But, you know, I, I know you're happy that Bay's going to be getting some some more press and, and airtime with New Japan. Yeah, man, him and Rush. I've not seen Rush since, uh, obviously, his, his WWE tenure, and I was wondering where he was going to end up. Of course, it's also, I guess, but him potentially uh, retiring at one point or, or saying something to that effect, but it's good to see him back. Uh, about to do his thing, obviously have a stage to really shine and do some stuff. Um, Bay as well, you know. Uh, can't can't wait to see the Bayisms he drops for his New Japan tenure. But uh, yeah, and like you said, I'm not gonna go full tilt and say they're gonna be full on uh, working consistently with Impact or anything. This is this is a good potential start for that. Um, we definitely know they probably won't be working with Ring of Honor no time soon. <laughs> uh, after the, uh, that that fiasco that was pulled, uh, but no, this is good. This is great. You know they they got some really great names in there. But I'm already biased because I'm I'm already looking for uh, Russian and uh, Bay to stand out. So it, it's gonna be interesting. That's for sure. Uh, there is talks about Ring of Honor and New Japan still doing stuff together, but you know right now it's kind of all in a holding pattern. You know, until yeah. there's a better handle on how to handle this 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 pandemic, uh, I, I don't see New Japan working with a lot of other companies to begin with. But I mean, good for all involved. You know, this is you know big headway for for these guys. You know, it, it's going to be a good thing. <clears throat> so, Marcus, we're going to go hop on over to the download side of uh, download side of things. So, if you're listening on Twitch, we haven't done it yet. 
you know, go back and, and enjoy whatever you're watching or doing beforehand. Uh, check back in a few hours, and it'll be uploaded and ready to go. For those of you listening on YouTube, it's right there down in, in, in the links down below, down in the, uh, the little expansion part of it. You know, just click, you know, under here. Like here, here it is. There it is right there. But if you want to do more, if you want to find more, if you want to engage in us more, realnerdcorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P dot com. We're on Twitter at N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P. We're on Instagram at Real Nerd Corp. We are on YouTube.com backslash The Rushing Underground, Twitch.tv backslash Rushing Underground. Marcus, you can be found on your Twitter account at Paradox Kid, P A R A D O X K I D. That's me. You can also find him on his other podcast, The True Penny Show, at True Penny Show on Twitter, T R U E P E N N Y S H O W. And you can find me yep. on mine at Chad Nerd Corp. Yep, that's right, Chad. Nerdcorp, C-H-A-D, N-E-R-D, C-O-R-P, and on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. For Marcus Green, I'm Chad Porto. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for giving us a chance. Remember, as always, to watch more wrestling. And Marcus, take us home. Good night, meat.